press the button. You go dive. You hope it works. You never know until you actually hit the button. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
uh, for some of that stuff. Thank you, B-Money. I, I wasn't able to come out there in time, so I, I think he... I think he ended up shortening up the book, so this looks like it was some of the stuff that was, uh, yeah, uh, four-page deleted uh, Merchantville uh, sequence by him out there. Those are the censored pages uh, you've seen except uh, scripted and lettered out there, so it sounded like he was going to do kind of a different, uh, maybe third act there, and um, uh, changed it up a little bit, so we're actually going to be able to see some of that. Uh, a five-page I'd never before seen. A deleted num a sequence that would be drawn by E.J. Morales, uh, Mor Morgus, I apologize out there, and Kyle Ritter uh, doing coloring. Uh, a five-page extended picnic, oh boy, oh boy, a uh, <laughs> sequence drawn and colored by uh, the great Kelsey Shannon out there. He says, uh, this is all the content I had no place for, and I thought you would enjoy having it. Well, if it's free, I tell you what, bear will. Uh, it is free. Uh, it's free with every purchase of uh, Second Chance on uh, the Wrecked Planet. Uh, gosh, I saw something last night. He was doing a drawing stream of that. I, I'm not sure if that... I uh, didn't watch uh, probably 20 or 30 minutes of it there, so uh, I'm not sure if that one was going out, or it might have been something with his... Um, with the uh, eBay store. I'm not sure if, if either one of those was, was that. But uh, yeah, if you've gotten the second chance, uh, Rec Planet, uh, you can go ahead and we'll have a free book in there with you. Uh, he says, uh, and obviously if you ordered a subscription tier, it's already already included. And there's Cyberfrog jumping, jumping through the air. Uh, thanks, everyone. That would be Uncle E out here. Uncle E out there. So we get... A great, I mean, it's a little bit late, but uh, hey, that's all right. You get a free book out of it. You get a great uh, free book out of it, including, uh, well, I, I think I already showed that one there, but that, that will let Beer do the thing with the thing here, because, uh, bah, 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 here we go. Here's the thing with the thing, and do the thing, and then you do the thing, people. There we go. I, uh, continuing on. Got like four or five of these here. A Chromium cover review. He says, hey, friends. Hey, Uncle Lee. Long time no see. Uh, all of the Cyberfront Erect Planet covers are a uh, Chromium. I believe this is the original campaign, if Bear's remembering correctly here. Uh, are, uh, and they are still available for pre-order pre on this campaign for a little while longer. So, again, I'm not sure which one... Which one might be coming to an end here, but uh, there you go. Uh, have a look, each is 25 bucks on its own, or you can back the worldwide or domestic subscription tiers. Get it out, beer. Uh, and you can get all of them. And there we go. Thanks for making this a huge success, I believe. Uh, let's see, there you go. Kind of a, a good look there at the chromium, chromium stuff out there. Let's see, American, does it say American Hopper? That's, um... Uh, a little covered there by the light there, but there you go. I, 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 maybe a little bit busy. I, I, I like the cover. I like the cover here, but it might be a little bit busy there. But otherwise, it looks really good. Looks really good. This one's pretty cool. I kind of like this one. Rick's Planet. Here we go. I like the, uh, the uh, what would you call that? The, the sort of honeycomb? The honeycomb. Body. It looks like he's breaking through. Breaking through the honeycomb and going to get some honey. Uh, much like beer out here. Much like a beer. Uh, is it Grant Crosby or Grant v -v 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 Car Crosby? Well, hello, hello, sir. Good to have him here. Great to have him here. Another great cover out here. Pretty cool. I actually like the kind of color, color contrasting with this. Like with the green. See the green on his feet or hands there, crushing uh, the bees out there. Much like beer. Much like beer out there. And then of course you get the Heather Swain cover. With, um, oh gosh, what was the daughter's name? I, I, was it Lily or something like that? I, I forget. It's been a while there, but uh, there you go. Heather Swade and Cyberfrog and uh, the little, the little one out there. I uh, really like this cover. I'm trying to remember who, was it Jay Lee? I think it was Jay Lee that did this one. I, 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 the cover was already pretty good. Uh, coming out with it in Chromium looks really good. Uh, that really shines. I kind of like that one. Kind of like that one. This probably is Beer's favorite. It's got the uh, Salamandroid there in the background and um, uh, Cyberfrog Deer taking down another bee. Um, yeah, I kind of like this one. It just has kind of a 
sort of a, a depth to it, and also kind of a a sort of wide color palette there as well, with the purples and the blues, and you get the greens and the reds and the oranges, all, all good stuff. Jay Lee, thank you, P Money. That would be that would be this one. It's I tell you what, people, when 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 you get it and it's been like a year and a half, you know, sometimes sometimes you forget some of these things out there. I want to say this was the for oh I never noticed the little the little girl there I always thought that was like a um, like a necklace or something like this. she's she's right there on Cyberfog's back I never noticed that before I tell you what all the stuff that you see and you never notice pretty cool pretty cool indeed so there's a there's all the chromium covers out there for you good people hopefully hopefully we we're able to get one of them out there looks pretty good. Let's see, he also had another one here, it was called the, um, what was it called, the Villains, hold on, let me get to it here, I'm going to tell it to you here, do, 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 do. where are we, the Villainous Scum, that would be the Chromium Wraparound cover, he forgot to, forgot to include that with all the other ones there. Look at there, it's got a bear, if Bear had known that this comic had bears in it, might have actually, um, uh, bought more copies out there. There you go. You can see the bear on the uh, on the back page there, kind of in the background. Hey, you don't want to have your bears in the background there, but that's all right. That's all right. Let's see. They had, oh gosh, who was the who was the villain? He he was in the he was in the ash can. It was the eight? Was it ninety eight ash can there? I, I forget the guy's name, I, like Beethoven or something like that. The guy with the keyboards there. Uh, he's in there. Looks like all the other, all the other ones that there as well. Very cool. A very nice cover. Very nice cover there. And then finally, I think finally, hold on, let me bring it up here. Bear with me. Ah, yes, here we go. Uh, deleted scenes hardcover. Uh, that would be the heart. Look, where am I? Hold on. Gosh darn it. One second here. Let me do the thing with the thing. Uh, there we go. There we go. Oh, let me show it to you, people. Wait, why am I talking when I can show it to you? Uh, the Deleted Scenes hardcover, uh, Heart Sick Horror. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, here is the Wrecked Planet uh, dis Deleted Scenes cover. Uh, that's the one that we were just talking about. Uh, 16 pages of arts and story. By himself, uh, Kelsey out there, and EJ Morales out there. Uh, Morgus, why do I keep saying Morales out there? I apologize, EJ. Uh, if you backed a Wrecked Planet in this campaign, you're getting one of these uh, for El Fribo out there. So pretty cool. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool indeed. And of course, he also has the Heartsick Horror. Uh, let's see, Vince Diver, Morris, and uh, was it Kanan White? This is White on there with uh, Kyle Ritter, oh, Wright, and uh, Weathers out there. Pretty cool. Oh, oh, shoot, I forgot to put that one in OBS, but um, it looks good. It looks good out there. Looks good. And then finally, let me see if I've got this. Do -do 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 -do. I thought I. Oh, shoot, did I cover that up? Hold on one second. Uh, ah, here we go. Let me see. Did I do the thing with the thing? Please tell me I did the thing. Oh, well, there's a nice little page there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. No. Oh, shoot. I forgot to put it in here. Oh, uh, well, I'll just read it all for you good people while you look at a beautiful page here. Uh, he says more about the Rick Planet deleted scenes. Uh, hey, friends. Hey, Ugly. Long time no see. Uh, people are extremely enthusiastic about Rick Planet deleted scenes. Let me see. Let me pull that one up. That would be. I, I got it mislabeled there, but that's the deleted. I got it mislabeled on OBS. It's not mislabeled there, but uh, there you go. That would be the deleted. <laughs> Come on, beer. One of these days. Professional show. Money's hanging, hanging on by a thread one of these days here, but uh, not today. <clears throat> a wrecked planet deleted scenes. And honestly, uh, they should be. It's really some good stuff out there, he says. Uh, some people are asking if they can just purchase the book without backing uh, this new campaign's variants, or if they can add uh, extra copies to their order, or even if he will autograph them. Hold on, let me see. Oh, uh, this is for the second chance. The second chance one. Uh, here is how it works. Uh, you will receive one free copy, one people, only one free copy, of uh, the deleted scenes here if you order uh, contains Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet. That would be off the Second Chance campaign. 
Uh, if you would like another, you can do an add-on um, at the checkout. If you'd like to buy the deleted scenes, if you'd like to only buy the deleted scenes, I should say, uh, he's opened up a perk uh, just for that book alone. If you'd like it autographed, uh, you can choose the Sign My Stuff EVS uh, uh, with your add-on at checkout and help yourself. And there is there's a look at that and, and an interior page. I meant to pull that one earlier. Golly. One of these days, people. Uh, yes, indeed. But uh, there you go. I, I think Beer might have had some of this in one of the earlier... Uh, campaign updates. It kind of looks familiar there, but uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Cyberfrog taking off. Uh, Heather, uh, hang on on the back. I wonder what the G loading with that, with that would be. I mean, wouldn't that kind of, um, you know, y y you see them in like the, the they send the pilots into the sort of the little whirly bird thing there to check out the uh, the G forces and like their face gets like you know all, all pancaked and then they pass out and everything. I wonder if that would happen if you. We're on, t on on the back of a frog, and, and he suddenly leaped into the air. You're, you're like hanging on for dear life. Hanging on, you better not let go, for crying out loud. I tell you, I tell you, people. So pretty good. Let me uh, let me see if I can uh, bring this. What am I doing? Where is this? What are you doing, bear? Come on, man. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's see, uh, since when did we start trusting Rumble B? Oh my goodness, you never trust a B, people. Never trust a B. Where's his gratitude? I, uh, gosh, is this the... That was the one thing that kind of confused Bear on the first one there, because he was fighting... Uh, Cyberfrog was fighting robot bees, uh, and then the alien bees came, and it was like, okay, which bee is which? I, I can't tell. Can't tell which bee is which out there, but um, other than that, that is pretty good. Pretty good. Anyways, there we go. Flying off. Not really into the sunset, but uh, flying off there. And again, probably probably has a G loading there on, uh, on her face. But that's all right. We're not looking for realism out here, people. We're just looking for some good stuff. Yes, indeed. Oh goodness. Missing missing out on the chat here. Let's see. Uh, great to see Amy. Great to see Amy. Uh, I, I don't know if you were around earlier, but uh, it was uh, it was uh, mashed potatoes with a little bit of gravy. Of course, also the sweet potatoes as well. Some of Bear's favorite. Of course, turkey. Can't forget the turkey. And pie. And pie. I know that's like five things of Bear's favorite things for Thanksgiving, but uh, there you go. Uh, there, there you are. Hey, Melissa. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. I... <laughs> I always go along and say, oh, you know, one or one of the other Lester sisters out there, oh, blah, 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 and then the other one, oh, gosh, I forgot about the other, oh, forgot about Melissa, I forgot about Amy, ah, I cried out loud, Urgh. hello, hello, Melissa, good to see you here. A comic is at least 47% uh, cooler uh, with bears in the background. This is a scientific, a very scientific fact. It goes up a bit if you uh, move them into the foreground. This is true. This is true. We're still trying to get uh, Gary Shipman to do uh, uh, Bears in Space. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he'll do that book. And it'll sell like hotcakes, people. I, I have been uh, sold, uh, had it been a uh, cyber bear. Well, <laughs> we, we could talk, maybe we could talk that into uh, Uncle Lee out there. It is true. It is science, says Melissa. Uh, yes, uh, comics need better bear representation. This is true. This is true. We need to start a hashtag or something. Uh, you wouldn't have forgot to do the thing, Bear. This is a professional show. Uh, let's see. Uh, free copy if you pay for it. Wait, what? No, 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 no. It is... Uh, let's see. Let me go back here because... Let me see if that... Will explain it. Oops, not that one. Uh, not that one. Let me see. No, not that one. Come on, Bear. Uh, is, this, is this it? I need to bring it up here. I can't read it. I can't read it there. Oops. Uh, for crying out loud. Uh, God dang it. Okay. Hold on. One second. <sighs> Let's see. Did I... Okay. It's not that one. Pardon me, people. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, yeah. What he's saying here uh, is basically all the all the stuff that he was taking out of the books. Um, he's going to be putting... Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, for the second chance campaign. I'm not sure if it was for the first one. I can't can't say that for a fact, but um, 
Uh, if you didn't get the first campaign, it looks like you can go on to the uh, second chance campaign there uh, and just order the book itself. But if you got it through the second chance campaign, it looks like uh, you get it for free. You get it for free out there. So uh, there you go. There you go. I was trying to find out where he said that here. But uh, anyways, it is El Fribo, sir. El Fribo. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aw, Bear. Let's see. Aw, Bear likes pie now. <laughs> Uncle, he likes you even more. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, you all just need to introduce a third Lester to... Th oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Throw us off here. <laughs> Potatoes, uh, like it isn't Thanksgiving without potatoes, pie and turkey. Oh, oh, and, and cranberry sauce. The cream, I, how could beer forget? The real stuff, people. The, n none of this in the can stuff. It's got to be real. Got to be real. P Money is going to change his name to P Money Lester. Yes, indeed. What about sweet potato pie? Of course. Of course. Yeah, with the, with the, um, uh, marshmallows, with the little marshmallows on top there. Put it in the oven the last little minute there, and it's nice and crusty on the top there. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, why can't Thanksgiving come already? Ah, for crying out loud. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, Amy is going to get a little brother in Little P Money out there. Yes, indeed. I, I'm making everybody, I'm making everybody hungry out here. Beer, beer apologizes about that. Let me go back here. There we go. Let's look at some Cyberfront instead. Ha, ha, ha. Anyways, that was that was the campaign update. It was all it was all cyber frog out there. So hopefully it looked like they're gonna be coming back from the printer here maybe at the end the end of November, kind of probably after Thanksgiving. So hopefully uh, hopefully um, and he's been pretty good about getting stuff and turning stuff around out there. So hopefully uh, people will be able to get their books before Christmas. I, I, I can't say that for certain or anything like that, but one would hope. One would hope that that would be you know, kind of the, the, the goal out there for Uncle Lee out there. All right, let me, let me find my place here. One second. Let me find my place. <clears throat> Let's see, P Money, oh my youngest, uh, just came in the room after a day of celebrating her birthday. Uh, can everyone say happy birthday to M Money? Happy birthday to you. Wait, hold on, can I do that without a copyright strike? Not uh, for crying out loud. Um, a Feliz Navidad. No, wait, that doesn't work. Um, I, I don't know how to sing the happy birthday song without a copyright strike, but happy, happy birthday out there to the little money out there. Little money. <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool indeed. And I'm, I'm assuming also a proud papa out there as well. Yes, indeed. A proud papa in P money. That, that, that could be, there we go, papa money. Ah, we finally figured out what the P in P money stands for. It only took, like, two years, but uh, we finally, finally figured it out. That's neat. All right. All right, people. I, I know... I, I don't know about some of you people, but Christmas... Christmas actually came a little bit early here for beer. A little bit early for beer. So let me get right on into it here, because... Because, people... Uh, you know, it's nice to be able to say things, but... When you're proven right... Oh, man, oh, man, it is, it's the chef's kiss out there. Ah, ah, yes, indeed. Anyways, came early for beer because, oh, the Z-Man out there. Ah, uh, we like to say the Z-Man out there. Uh, from our good friends out here at Bounding Into Comics. Let's see, who is this? Uh, the great, the great J.B. Augustine out here. A uh, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, the Z-Man out there. On the future of the DCU, there is not going to be... Quattro Batmans out there. No, no, there's not. That's what we've been saying here for quite some time. Oh, we're used to seeing a uh, sundry different takes on Batman. What is sundry? Hold on. A beer has learned a new word here today. Hold on. Let me see. Sundry. <clears throat> sundry of various kinds, uh, several, uh, or, or sundries out there. Let's see. Uh, thesaurus. Wings or radiators? What? No. What does that have to do? Uh, various kinds. Sundry people means of various kinds out there. Beer has learned a new word today. 
Uh, no, not four Batmans. We demand five Batmans. I think there might actually be five. Uh, we are used to seeing sundry different takes on Batman and DC movies uh, these days, from Robert Patterson to Ben Affleck and soon Michael Keaton. Fingers crossed. Uh, that is if his comeback ever really comes to pass. But the big guy at Warner Brothers Discovery, that would be the Z-Man out there, is saying we shouldn't remain used to that uh, for much longer. Old Michael Keaton's giving him the, the old stink eye out there. I'm like, huh? What about me? What about me and my paycheck? Uh, by the way, um, uh, what's the name of the movie? Um, is it The Founder? Is that the one about the McDonald's? Um, they tried to make Michael Keaton into the bat, the, the bad man in the, that movie. Not the bad man, but the bad, the bad guy in that movie. Um, he ended up turning out to be the good guy. That's a really good movie. I kind of like that. Um, I think it's called The Founder out there. So, um, you get a chance. Check that out. It's kind of about the, uh, early days of McDonald's out there. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> I think over the next few years, you're going to see a lot of growth and opportunity around D.C., there's not going to be four Batmans. What have we been saying? What have we been saying for the longest time, people? The Z-Man said uh, to the Hollywood Reporter, and so part of our strategy is to drive the hell out of DC. What? Huh? Uh, which uh, James and Peter are going to do. Um, like an exorcism? Uh, uh, the only other way Bear could take that is like, uh, you know, you're just gonna uh, rag the hell out of your car. So I'm gonna drive the hell out of my car. I'm gonna drive the hell out of DC. Uh, it could, it could actually be an exorcism. You never know. It is Hollywood. Uh, he, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, he added uh, that there are more thrills coming from the new uh, co-chairman of DC Studios, uh, filmmaker Gunn and Shazam producer uh, Saffron. Saffron? Saffron? Whatever. I, I think they've thrilled the fans. Eh, maybe. Okay. I think they're going to thrill you over a period of time, he said. Also hinting at the changes to come uh, creatively and what he sees in them as leaders. Hmm. 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 Let's see. Uh, as, oh, oh, uh, yes, indeed, indeed. Let's give a R.I.P. out there. Uh, to the uh, greatest Batman ever out there, that would be um, Kevin. Uh, is it Con Conley? Conley? I forget. I forget his last name there. But uh, there you go. There you go out there. Oh. Anyways, moving moving quickly along here. Uh, there are more Batmans than most of us realize uh, when we look at the playing field. Uh, so reigning in the number of them down to one, maybe two, is a worthwhile pursuit. Yeah, and it's just the smart move out there. Aside from uh, Patterson in The Batman, and Affleck in the Snyderverse, there's also uh, Ian Glenn, who? Uh, who plays a retired, unstable Bruce Wayne on Titans periodically. Uh, uh, is that the TV show? Is that the, is that the one with the kids? Something like that in there. They're, they're all like, um, like teens or something like that. Is that the one? A retired and unstable Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I, I've got the I've got the same look on my face out there. It's like, huh? What? I Conroy. Yes, I. What did I say? Yes, I, I absolutely out there. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. I add in Glenn along with Keaton, and you have four actors uh, playing just as many different versions of oh, Batman and Wayne in the DC film and TV multiverse. Uh, even if. Uh, they only mosey around every so often. Uh, Keaton's status is in doubt uh, with Batgirl gone, uh, but he's still scheduled to guest star in The Flash <sighs> next year. I, I really hope we don't get that movie. Uh, um, uh, well, let me put it a different way. I hope they recast. I hope they recast old, old, old what's his name? Old, uh, uh, crazy face out there. Um, what's his name? Anyways, uh, uh, the Flash out there, they should just recast, recast that. Uh, the Z-Man contrasted that variety with the perception of tighter control uh, Marvel has over their continuity. Uh, Disney, oh God, I really hate to say this, did a wonderful job with Marvel? Uh, uh, but if you looked at Marvel in DC 10 years ago, you would have said, uh, DC is as good or better. Really? 10 years ago? Okay, 
Okay, we'll, we'll go along with that, Z-Man. Uh, but, Marvel, <laughs> but Marvel is a connected universe. It has a Bible. That would be sacrilegious. Uh, the key was having one person following everything. Uh, adding that DC is an undervalued asset, the Z-Man continued, all of Marvel is in one place. Uh, you don't wake up to find that there's been a Batman TV show uh, someplace. DC is one of the biggest opportunities uh, this company has. Our company is a creative company, and so we found two great guys. You'll see a lot of growth around DC. You know, a lot of people kind of complained about um, uh, Zack Snyder, kind of the dark kind of a dark uh, uh, coloring and, and uh, look in his films. It uh, doesn't compare to V Batman, where you really can't see anything. At least you can see... At least you can see uh, Ben Affleck there. At least you can see his face. <clears throat> uh, he laments there hasn't been a solo Superman movie in 13 years, and shares the goal is to reverse that by driving the hell out of an undervalued DC. They're gonna, you know, bring, bring the crosses... You know, they're going to have the, the holy water, you know, gonna drive the hell out of it. Drive, you know, get out, get out. Demons, demons be gone. Oh, which the Z-Man believe. I, if, if you're going to pick anybody to uh, uh, drive the hell out of something, I'm not sure if uh, uh, James Gunn would be the um, top of the list there for you, but there you go. Uh, he believes that Gunn and Saffron are going to do. They're going to drive the hell out of it. Uh, <laughs> What kind, of, what kind of quote is that? Uh, who they intend to anoint as their one and only Batman is up in the air, but there are terrible signs and candidates. Uh, Matt Reeves is expanding his dank, there we go, I like that word, his dank and shadowy Gotham City uh, with sequels, question mark, question mark, and HBO Max spinoffs uh, starting with the Penguin and the Denzians of Arkham Asylum, uh, so Patterson uh, should stay in the cowl for the foreseeable future. I totally disagree with that. Totally disagree with that. Uh, the possibility of bringing him into the mainline DCU uh, exists, although how Gunn and Saffron uh, get him there could strain credulity and clash with Reese's grim realism as Batman shoves the shotgun barrel right into his mouth there, uh, in a, in a, um, a Kurt Cobain-esque realism, quote-unquote, out there. Uh, here's the way, here's the way that you should do this, okay? Let, let, let's say they want to, uh, uh, keep Ben Affleck. Let's just say they want to keep Ben Affleck. Uh, Michael Keaton just kind of stays around for a movie and then he's kind of poof gone. He, he looks really shocked at that, too. What? I'm gone? No way. Let's just say they kind of have, um, uh, ben Affleck kind of stick around. Well, uh, they I don't know if they've already started shooting uh, the Penguin or not. It sounds like they did pre-production on it. I, I'm not sure if they've done any any filming on that. But let's just say they do it, they, they shoot it, and it does well or something like that. What they should do is they should probably have, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Colin Farrell uh, come in uh, to, you know, sort of the, the Affleck universe out there. Uh, maybe, maybe even have, um, what's his name, jo Jacqueline Phoenix, uh, have him come in as the Joker, maybe? Uh, so you've got already two films out there, or a film and a TV show out here. Well, uh, a, a TV show, a film, and the other film out there for the Penguin. Um, do that where you have people that know the character, they're not, like, just jumping in straight away, kind of like what they did with, you know, Batman and Superman. Oh, here's Batman. You know, here you go. it has a little bit of a backstory to it. I just have the Penguin come in. Forget about um, forget about old uh, Twilight toes out there, and just just have some of the good, some of the good characters that you have kind of laying around, and just kind of kind of mold everything together in kind of one one cohesive package. I, I think that would work. Uh, you can even bring in um, uh, what's his name, uh, Paul Dino out there. I did a, did a really good job with uh, the Riddler there, so um. I'd probably do that. Uh, get rid of what's her face. There is is Catwoman. She didn't uh, didn't really uh, 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 do much for beer. I did okay. Did alright. Look at this dark, dank. I love the word dank. This dank footage here from the Robert Patterson, the Batman. <clears throat> uh, ben F Ben Affleck is noted is uh, entrenched again, and I'm not sure how many. He was supposed to have a two, maybe a three-picture deal, uh, and then, of course, it fell through 
Um, he was supposed to do what became of the Batman, so I'm not sure if he still has uh, that contract or if he's doing a new one or something like that. But uh, entrenched again, as they say, uh, and at the expense of Michael Keaton's revival. Oh, the poor guy. He's like, what, 70 years old now? Uh, no less. Uh, Affleck is taking uh, the place of the latter in Aquaman. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, in the Lost uh, Kingdom. Coming out, what, like next year? Uh, and we'll probably uh, have more to do in the Flash if reports of reshoots are accurate. And if they are uh, extensive enough, a note that Keaton was Walter Honda's idea. He's out of there. He is gone, gone, gone. I think he's over at Paramount now. Under the Z-Man, uh, Batgirl was axed without a second thought, and Hamda is out of a job. Uh, Keaton may join him after the Flash to bring the DCU's amount of active caped crusaders down to two. Uh, that would mean the choice between a Patterson and Affleck. Well, that's an easy choice right there. But it's considerably easy when you realize the Twilight Star's age gives him an edge. No, it doesn't. Uh, again, fine actor, terrible casting in this one. Just terrible. He, he would have done good as maybe one of the villains, but um, no, just no, no. The choice between uh, Patterson and Affleck, you go with you go with Affleck every time. Every, every single time. Right, Michael Keaton? He, he nods sagely. Nods sagely out there. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. I think the judge ruled that Happy Birthday is public domain now. Well, uh, in that case, Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, little P. Money. Happy Birthday. To you, and don't copyright this because it should be out of date, according to a judge somewhere. Oh. Yes, indeed. Batman. Batman. Yes, indeed. Uh, especially since we lost the greatest. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's see. Um. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, we get someone who doesn't kidnap uh, children to play their lead role. Ale quote unquote, allegedly up at your pot farm and. In Vermont, uh, with um, automatic uh, weapons out there, allegedly, allegedly, uh, he doesn't kidnap children. He just keeps them in a place they cannot leave. Uh, and oh, 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 ee, 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 ee. Uh, they should have budgeted more for light bulbs when they made the Batman. Uh, they should have just let Ben Affleck do it. I, I, I. It, it, the whole circumstances behind it was just so silly. I, again, that's why Bear kind of thinks it's kind of a one-off. Uh, they had some great uh, casting with uh, Colin Farrell. Uh, uh, Paul Dino did a just terrific job with it. Um, Patterson, no, I mean, fine actor, just miscast. Just totally miscast. Ay, ay, ay. Let's see, uh, they should drive all the devils they can, can they can out of it. Yes, indeed. Cast out. Cast out those demons. Cast them out. Cast, cast them out. Speaking of casting out demons, speaking of casting out demons, uh, the Walking Dead creature, uh, that would be Robert Kirkman, and EPs, uh, executive producers out there, uh, sue AMC for the low, low price of $200 million in the latest legal skirmish out there. Uh, this is from uh, ComicBook.com and uh, Adam Branhart out here. Adam Branhart. Uh, as AMC prepares to air the final episode of The Walking Dead later this week, why would you air the final thing at Thanksgiving? Uh, wouldn't you want to do it maybe like during Halloween or something like that? What the, the AMC, I tell you. <sighs> Just terrible. This is why Bear doesn't watch this show anymore. Long, long ago. I mean, they killed off the main character. Uh, pardon me, pardon me, spoiler alerts. They got rid of the main character out there. So, um, like, okay, now we're going to follow, like, 25 other people that nobody really cares about. Nobody ever dies anymore. So it's like, eh. <sighs> Anyways, they're finally, finally just strangling it, you know, hitting it with the baseball bat over and over again until it just kind of, kind of dies out there. Uh, let's see, uh, the creature behind the comic series uh, the show is based on has sued the network once again. Uh, uh, y'all, let's see, who was it? Uh, Daremount also, um, also did it as well. Uh, after Robert Kirkman's first lawsuit against the network stalled in court, uh, Kirkman and other producers of the show, that would be uh, Gail Inherd, Inherd, 
heard me out here. A David Alpert, a Charles, Charles Egley, and Glenn Amarsra. Uh, let's see, I think he was the showrunner for a couple years. Um, if Bear, Bear remembers correctly. Uh, didn't he also do The Shield? Or was that somebody else? Um, anyways, uh, has sued AMC for an alleged breach of contract. Uh, the suit is seeking uh, $200 million in damage uh, for the group of producers. Even though AMC exploited a plaintiff's ideas and services to make billions, billions, people, uh, from the Walking Dead franchise. <laughs> you could you could say that again. It is a franchise that is dead. Uh, AMC issued a uh, Magar definition that, in its original form, would have paid out a single dollar in profit uh, participation to the plaintiffs. Unsurprisingly, AMC's Magar a definition has spurred a storm of disputes with the creative talent on The Walking Dead uh, that ultimately resulted in litigation. Uh, filed in LA uh, Superior Court, the filing adds the plaintiffs are entitled to the same treatment afforded to Darabout, Darabout, I forget, uh, as uh, with respect to his MAGA interest. I, I keep trying to say MAGA. Uh, <laughs> they were uh, therefore entitled to have the same value applied to their MAGA interest Oh, which coll collectively exceeded their balance and CAAs. I think that is the um, Creative Arts Agency. Uh, the comment is referring to the settlement made between a uh, former Walking Dead showrunner, Frank Gearbound, and AMC in 2021. An outside lawyer for AMC told the trade uh, that the lawsuit was, quote, just another crass money grab. By the way, go check out our... <laughs> Are fully loaded up uh, Walking Dead um, uh, uh, spin off shows out there. All of them. All, you gotta watch all of them. They're not cra crass money grabs at all. Uh, Robert Kirkman uh, and the others uh, of these plaintiffs have had their biggest claims against AMC networks thrown out of the course twice, uh, so now they're back with another lawsuit. Well, third time's the charm. Uh, let's see, add, add another lawsuit uh, means another attempt to rewrite their uh, agreements uh, and extract even more than the millions that have already been paid and will be paid in the future for their profit participation in The Walking Dead. This is just another crass money grab. Uh, go watch all 12 of our spinoff shows. Oh, we are confident it will fail as their previous attempts have failed. Also, spinoff shows. Uh, the Walking Dead proper will end... Will it? Will it on November 20th as it airs the series finale? AMC, however, is actively expanding the universe. Uh, this series has established a continuing to produce, uh, let's see, uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. That was good for like the first season. Then they got beyond the actual, you know, outbreak and everything. Then it just became The Walking Dead. Uh, and the two other spinoffs, I, I didn't even know about that, one starring uh, Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morin, and another featuring uh, Norman Reedus, he, haven't, he hasn't been killed off, uh, Andrew Lincoln and uh, Danny Guerrero, are, are also set to reprise their roles at Rick Grimes, oh, he's alive, and Miss Schoen in an upcoming mini-series. I thought it was supposed to be a movie. Eh, whatever. Uh, though little else has been revealed. Oh. Anyways, they are suing for the low, low price of $200 million. Yes, indeed. Nice segue, Bear. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 um, I'm under pressure here. I don't know how to segue to this one. Um, hmm. Let's see. Um, uh, speaking, speaking of franchises that are just shuffling around as their neurases, neurapses, uh, fire in their brain-dead brain out there. Uh, just, just the last bits of rigmarortis out there just kind of shaking the, shaking the hands or something like that. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we're talking about Indiana Jones 5. Uh, well, I, that's not a very good, not a very good segue. I should have I should have written that one down. That would have, need to do a better segue, Bear. Er, uh, Indiana Jones... Oh, we'll pit Indy against uh, the, the, the uh, mid-20th century Central European uh, superpower out there again in 1969. Uh, this is an exclusive by Ben Travis at Empire Online. That's yes, neat. Bear has a gift for segues. Uh, kind of, sort of. I hope. I hope. Uh, it still needs work. still needs work out there. 
If there's something Indiana Jones hates more than snakes, it's the bad Nazis. Uh, bad Germans, I meant. Gosh darn it. Uh, gosh dang it. Uh, ever since Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Harrison Ford's hero has been fighting uh, the hordes of Adolf out there, uh, thwarting their plans, brawling with them, or even just letting them uh, be hoisted by their own Picards out there. When meddling with ancient mythic relics, uh, given that the upcoming yet untitled Indiana Jones 5, uh, where are my glasses? Uh, Indiana Jones 5, uh, get off my lawn, you stinking kids. Uh, Indiana Jones 5, those dang clouds, urgh. Uh, Indiana Jones 5, um, uh, applying for Medicare. Uh, is set uh, decades after the events of World War II. It's 69. That's like, what, 25 years? That's not decades. Come on, man. Come on, man! Uh, you'd be forgiven uh, for thinking that Indy might have a different enemy this time around. Well, uh, let's see. The last time uh, he, he fought um, uh, the commies. He actually fought uh, the Ruskies out there. Uh, why not? Why not fight the Ruskies again? They're good. Uh, listen, uh, it would be timely, wouldn't it? It would be very timely if um, Indiana Jones was punching a Ruski right in the face. I think that would work. I think that would work. Ah, but Bear, Bear has been forgiven. I don't want your forgiveness, sir. I don't want your forgiveness. It's too much. Too, 1969, we don't need bad Germans out here. Ah, come on, man. Uh, but while much is new in the upcoming blockbuster, some things never change. Uh, if Indiana Jones is back in action, so too are some familiar, fearsome forces. That's a tongue twister. Empire can reveal that Indiana Jones 5, uh... <laughs> Indiana Jones 5, uh, get off my lawn, you stinking kids, uh, finds our hero in 1969, uh, living against the backdrop of the space race. Huh? Uh, uh, I'm sure there's something, a couple other things going on there in 1969 that, um... Uh, you're not gonna touch that with a ten-foot pole. Uh, but the American effort to beat the Ruskies to the moon... Oh, it'd be, it's, it's, the, it's the Soviets. It's the, let's see, uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The USSR out there. Uh, to the moon brings with it some uncomfortable truths for Andy... Uh, like that he found the the crystal skull and the, the UFO took off to the moon or something? The simple fact that the moon landing program was run by a bunch of, uh, for crying out loud. Um, no, 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 uh, 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 uh we'll move on. Uh, Indiana Jones 5, Where Are My Glasses co-writer and acclaimed British playwright, uh, Jez Butterworth? Oh, come on, that's not your real name, is it? Come on, Jez. Uh, tells Empire uh, how X they are uh, is the question, and it gets up Indiana's nose. Really? It's like cocaine. Ah, uh, there we go. The the bad Germans are, are doing the cocaine trade. Ah, uh, we knew it. We knew it all along. Uh, pitching Indiana, a man who's always looking to the secrets of the Earth rather than the stars, except for that last movie, but uh, we all forgot about that last movie. Uh, into the area of the astronauts finds him even a more even more a man out of time. Huh? Eh, whatever. Uh, it's not just that the model of what a hero is has completely changed. It's nineteen sixty nine. It's not it's not twenty nineteen. I, I think they had heroes still. They still had heroes back then. <sighs> It's not just that they're looking for something where there's nothing up there. Uh, it's like Reno without the gambling or whatever his line is. Uh, but the people that are behind it are, you know, his sworn enemy. What? What kind of jibber jabber? What kind of... Are you a playwright, sir? I doubt... I, I doubt you're a playwright, much less an acclaimed playwright out there. I enter uh, Mads Milkinson's villainous voler. Uh, inspired partly by real-life bad German turned NASA, Na NASA engineer Werner, Werner von Braun. <sighs> Let's uh, for crying out loud! Ay, 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 ay. Ay, we don't we ay, we don't need to go through the entire thing here, but um, I, I, just because you happen to 
uh, you know, value your life, and that's why you kind of signed on to uh, a political party that you might not have agreed with, and you actually helped, you know, actively sabotage, it doesn't make you the conductor throwing people into the trains. Uh, we can, we can kind of delineate the two there. We can delineate the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he's a man who would like to correct uh, some of the mistakes of the past. Of course, uh, says Milkinson of Voler. Uh, there is something that can make the world a much better place to live in. Uh, he would love to get his hands on it. Indiana Jones uh, wants to get his hands on it as well. And so we have a story? Uh, okay. I mean, come on, listen, uh, oh gosh, I don't have it right in front of me here. Uh, um, uh, Werner von Braun, uh, uh, let's see, what was it, The Conquest of the Moon out there? A great, a great book out there, if you're able able to get a hold of that. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, kind of all of the uh, 1950s kind of space age stuff basically came from that book. So, uh, you know, the rotating... Um, a solar, or not, um, a space station out there. Uh, if you've ever seen 2001, the space station there, that came from, that came from Werner von Braun. Uh, the space shuttle uh, going to the moon, uh, basically all of SpaceX's stuff. Uh, that's Werner von Braun, uh, the evil German out there. <sighs> it's a story that blends of fact fiction. Fedoras and, oh, for crying out loud. Including, uh, let's see, they had the first one with the bad Germans. The second ones, let's see, they, they had the, the, you know, the Japanese people there in the very beginning of it, but it was mainly, um, what was it, Indians or Pakistanis or something like that. Let's see, uh, the third one obviously had, had bad Germans in there. Uh, the fourth one had space aliens and, um, and, and the Ruskies out there. Uh, so basically half, half of the franchises. Bad Germans, the other half, not so much. Uh, we can do it, we can do it with, um, you know, they should have done something with, uh, Mao. I mean, Mao killed a whole lot more people than, um, uh, the, the stinking painter, Austrian painter out there. But, uh, including, it's gonna include people, a major action set piece, at the Apollo 11 ticker tape parade in New York. A major action set piece at the ticker tape parade. A throne to celebrate the astronauts on 13 August of 1969. Uh, the sequence not only scenes of Boyd Holbrook's uh, nefarious uh, caliber, uh, caught in the middle of the historic celebration, uh, but it also provides the inspiration for uh, their exclusive uh, blah 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 blah, yada yada yada. Uh, oh man. I, I'm already gonna. No, let's. I, Bear, Bear's gonna boycott this movie. I, I can't. I, Bear can't even. Oh, for crying. Even after the last movie. You didn't learn. I, I Bear can at least appreciate uh, certain segments of the last movie. I mean, the the, the first, uh, you know, kind of a uh, couple sequences there where, you know, Indiana Jones breaks back into uh, Area 51 and kind of they go up. Uh, Bear would even kind of, um, uh, he, he could... Listen, it's kind of a fun movie. The nuke the fridge thing, it's fine. Uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, some of the, just the sequences themselves, each little scene. A uh, bear can defend that. Uh, the entire movie, not so much. It was quite a mess. But how do you follow up UFOs? You have UFOs and crystal skulls in the fourth one. And then you're going to go to your major action set piece set at a ticker tape parade. Woodstock, huge moon, uh, bad Germans out there. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Let's see, all the bad German hippies said Woodstock, yes. <laughs> Wait, Indiana Jones drank from the Holy Grail and has supernatural extended life. Um, uh, sure. Well, let's see, did it? Well, uh, no, because he didn't... You would have the extended life, but as long as you stayed, like, in that cave, right? They, they had the cave with the, uh, with the, with the, uh, what, what, what was it? The, the, the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail there. But, like, um, once they, once they crossed, what was it? He was trying to take the Holy Grail out of the cave there, and, like, all of a sudden, the, the earthquake, uh, spoiler alert, people, I'm sorry. Uh, the earthquake happened, and then the, uh, the blonde lady there, she tried to grab it, but then fell to her death, and the, 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 um, 
when they cupped there, kind of fell down into the chasm there, and that was it. So I, I think that, um, what was it, like a Knights Templar or something like that, uh, he was there, uh, he he'd lived all that time, but, you know, he's like in the cave there, you know, it's like, oh, you know, uh, not, not a whole lot of action here in the cave, you know, what's going on, so... Um, I, yeah, I, I think I think that was the case. So um, no, that's why he's so old in the fourth movie. And then they said, "Hey, you know what? You know what? He broke a hip in the fourth movie. So let's put uh, an even more uh, decrepitly aged uh, Harrison Ford into the fifth one. Harrison Ford, uh, ow my hip. <laughs> or uh, let's see, uh, Indiana Jones five, ow my hip. Yes, indeed. Let's see. Um." <clears throat> Well, uh, P Money uh, made <laughs> P Money explained all. There we go. Thank you, P Money. In uh, 1969, uh, that's when man landed on the moon. That's correct. Wait, does Indy go to the moon? Are there moon uh, bad Germans? Does he fight moon bad Germans? Well, well, uh, uh, that would make a better a better extended action sequence than a ticker tape parade. That sounds incredibly boring. Well, at least it didn't undo Hillinga's father, uh, father after they escaped. Oh, that, that's true. I, well, I think it just cauterized his wound or something like that. Oh, let's see. R.I.P. James Bond out there. R.I.P. Sean Connery. I, I still like the idea of 1969 Woodstock, and he fights Woodstock hippies. Yes, indeed. Oh, Woodstock hippie bad Germans out there. Yes, indeed. I, I think I think so, especially especially if the bad Germans are involved in the cocaine trade. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, no, I was joking. Crying, says Melissa. Crying? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Woodstock hippie moon bad Germans. Yes, yes, indeed. Good grief. What were they thinking? Yes. I, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I don't know. Don't look at Bear. Don't look at Bear. If he's finding a mystical artifact on the moon, the low gravity could help. He could stop the giant rolling boulder with one hand. Ha! Ha ha! This is true. This is... But, I mean, okay. You had literal UFOs in the fourth movie. And now you're like, ah! In the moon! Like, okay, you know, did the, did the, you know, space people go to the moon? Did the crystal skull people go to the moon? Spoiler alert, sorry, people. Uh, did he, did they go to the moon? Is that how they kind of tie everything in? Are they going to send Harrison Ford to the moon, is the question. I don't, are there snakes on the moon? This is also a question. Yes, indeed, Amy. Yes, indeed. Moon snakes. <laughs> Yep, you pick up a rock, and underneath there, there's a moon snake. Ah! Then it bites you, and you're like, ah, oh, no, not the moon snake. Not the moon snake. And then the snake kind of, like, you know, goes into the lunar module there and, um, you know, takes off. There's like, oh, that would be, oh, my goodness, people. Who? Uh, snakes in a, in a moon lander. Instead of snakes on a plane, snakes in a moon lander. That would make, yeah, think of, okay, all right, hold on, people. We're rewriting this. Indiana Jones goes to the moon. Indiana Jones goes to the moon and finds moon snakes, his most fearsome enemy, other than the bad Germans out there. And in the in the chaos, in the ticker tape parade on the moon, action sequence on the moon, uh, they all go back into the the uh, lunar lander out there and you know fly off back up to the um, what was that the command module there. And then all of a sudden they open the door. Ah, moon snakes. Ah. Oh my gosh, it'd be kind of like uh, Apollo 13 meets uh, Snakes on the Plane. We gotta get these dang moon snakes off this dang plane. Plane. Dang, dang moon rocket. Ah. I don't know how we could fold in um, uh, Samuel L. Jackson in there, but we gotta be able to fold him in there. This is ten times better than Indiana Jones 5. Uh, uh, get, off my, get off my lawn, you stinking kids. There you go. There, you, I gotta get these gosh darn snakes off this gosh darn rocket. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> we just made a better movie. We just made a better movie there, right there. And then, and then somehow they punch, they punch a Ruski. Uh, like they, they go back up, like where the Apollo thing meets up with the Soyuz thing. It's like the only way they can get back to Earth is like, um, you know, meeting back up with the Soyuz or something like that. So they kind of meet back up there. They open the, they open the, the airlocks there. Ah! 
space snakes, moon snakes, oh my gosh. And, and then and then Indy just like, you know, pu- punches one of the rooskies. All right, we're taking over now. Gotta get back to Earth. There we go. That's, that's, uh, listen, people, that is ten times a better movie. Ten, just, yes, yes. I, 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 let's see. I might use the money they give uh, me to make this movie. I like it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We can do that after the other, what was that? The Black Panther movie that we're going to rewrite. Yes. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> I, I, I need to get back to this. Uh, so, uh, is he going to run away dramatically from the giant balloon float in this exciting ticker tape parade opening? I don't know if it's the opening or, like, they said it was, like, a... Where was it here? Um, like, like th- this was the, the, the action sequence. A major action set piece set at the Apollo 11 ticker tape parade in New York. Like, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, sure, sure. That and the, uh, what was that? The flea bag lady. Um, yeah. <sighs> For crying out loud. Right, so if the last movies were aliens, then maybe the next artifact on the, uh, what's the next artifact on the moon? Yes, indeed. Space snakes. Lunar snakes. Moon snakes. Moon snakes. Snakes on a plane. Here we go. There we are. Didn't a fridge hurl Indiana from an atomic bomb? The time the fridge will hurl him to the moon. Really? Well, that's pretty cool. They they actually have um kind of a kind of an urban legend out there. They were doing some atomic testing, like underground and whatnot. So they had like a um lack of a better word, uh, kind of a manhole cover. They were, you know, covering it. It was kind of a plug. It was like a, several tons or something like that. But they had kind of a plug. They they would drill down into the earth. They'd plant the bomb and all their instruments that they were going to do. And then plug it back up with this huge, you know, iron or metal piece there. It blew up the uh, uh, atomic explosion. Well, the pressure in there apparently launched this multi-ton, you know, manhole cover or plug or whatever. Like into orbit. Into orbit out there. So th- technically that might be the first... A uh, man-made object in the moon there, so that might be not might not be very far off there. Might not be very far off. Yes, indeed. Uh, there you go. A uh, P money has it hit the fridge with an even bigger bomb this time. It he'll make it to the moon. I, I, I hope he has air in that uh, fridge. I hope he has air in that fridge. All right, people. All right, listen. Bear knows his audience here. He knows his audience. Uh, you come. You coming for the comic book news. You might stay for some of the crazier, you know, uh, Batman stuff, The Walking Dead, Indiana Jones 5, Get Off My Lawn, You Stinking Kids. But he knows what you really come here for. That's right, people. The Crypto Talk. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We are back at it here. We actually talked about this uh, not that long ago. Uh, this FTX stuff, uh, just crazy stuff. I'm trying not to get into the politics of it. Uh, but uh, we had a news story not a while back. Um, $477 million was apparently quote-unquote hacked out there. Well, it turns out, uh, who knew? Who knew the Bahamian government um, was one of the great hackers out there? Who knew? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, Market Watch and um, Lucas L. Alpert. Alpert out there. Yes, indeed. Uh Uh-oh, it's crypto, Melissa says, and there goes Bear's audience. Just completely crashes. And the transfer, quote-unquote, of $477 million of crypto out of the FTX account last weekend raises worries of theft, but is part of a fight over the control of the exchange's bankruptcy. (coughs) Remember that uh, half uh, hack, rather, of nearly half a billion dollars in cryptocurrency from bankrupt FTX last weekend. God, it sounds like forever, but it was last weekend. It turns out it was actually a government asset seizure. Quote, unquote. The Securities Commission of the Bahamas has now acknowledged that it was behind the removal of uh, $477 million in crypto assets uh, from the bankrupt exchange on November 12th. The Securities Commission of the Bahamas, in the exercise of its powers as a regulator acting under the authority of an order made by the Supreme Court of the Bahamas, uh, took the action of directing the transfer of all the digital assets, assets rather, of FTX digital marketplaces uh, to a digital wallet controlled 
by the commission for quote unquote safekeeping. Because if you want your millions and millions of dollars to be held safe, there's no better place than uh, the the government of the Bahamas down there. Uh, complete straight arrows down there. Straight arrows. The tra- quote unquote transfer occurred the day after FTX had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in Delaware. Hmm. Hmm. I, there, there, wasn't there a senator there from a while back there? Hmm. And immediately sparked concerns of a major hack. Uh, well, don't worry, people. Uh, the company announced that day that unauthorized access to certain assets had occurred and that they were coordinating with law enforcement on the matter. Well, it turned out it was the Bahamian government. On Thursday, a U.S. bank, uh, based rather, bankruptcy administrator led by John Ray the Third, not not the second or the fourth, but the third, uh, who had taken control of FTX. Ha ha, sucker! Uh, said in court filings that they had quote credible evidence that officials in Bahamas had directed uh, the bankmen out there to access FTX's system after the chapter level fi- level filing uh, for the purpose of obtaining digital assets of the debtors. The seizure of assets came amid an emerging fight over the control of the direction of the bankruptcy proceedings, with officials in the Bahamas filing a separate Chapter 15 of bankruptcy petition in federal court in New York over on November 15th. Uh, the filing... Why does it look weird? Why is that? Is it like the F and the... I think the F went over the I there. <clears throat> That's weird. Uh, that filing was on behalf of uh, the FTX Digital Markets, a subsidiary, like they had like 50 of them, uh, that managed significant aspects of the company's operations from its headquarters in the Caribbean island nation. A Chapter 15 filing is used typically in cases involving companies with debtors in multiple countries. It statements the Bahamian Securities Commission. By the way, if you ever want your money in a secure place, you gotta put it in the Bahamian Securities Commission. I said it believed that the FTX digital market was not part of the Delaware bankruptcy proceedings, so it's all ours. All your FTX is ours. The administrators... Administrators of the Delaware bankruptcy has asked the judge in their case to combine the cases uh, to, to completely uh, quash any, um, any uh, people looking into any of that sort of stuff. I, I meant uh, saying that it was duplicative and confusing to keep them separate. Uh, the judge scheduled a hearing uh, on the matter for Monday, and the administrators of the Delaware case have accused the bankman of attempting to undermine their efforts to sort out this mess he left behind by pushing the second bankruptcy case brought by the Bahamian officials. Or, or, uh, while he's there, uh, he needs to kind of pay off a certain amount of people so he doesn't get, you know, types deleted out there. Uh, and, you know, it kind of helps to, you know, have some friends as well in case you need to kind of, oh, I don't know, uh, leave the Bahamas uh, uh, very quickly to a non-extradition country up there. That might be the case. That might be the case. I think $477 million uh, might just cover it. Might just cover it after all. It is time for crypto, Amy. It is time for crypto. Yes, indeed. Oh, well, if the FTX uh, is that low, this is the perfect time to buy. Oh, man, oh, man. You got you got to buy it on the dip. Buy it on that dip, baby. Uh, uh, maybe. I feel like we need to get the Bahamas crew to dive uh, some devils out of this thing, too. Multiple, multiple devils out there. Multiple devils out there. And not related to anything. Uh, we were talking about this last week here. Uh, let's see, what was this? Uh, Genesis Global Capital out there. Uh, they're going down, so if you have, be money if you've got any money, not that you should listen to Bear on financial advice out here, but uh, if you've got any money with Genesis Global Capital, uh, you should probably uh, check it out there. A grayscale discount widens to a record 43% as FTX contagion uh, spreads. Uh, the added pressure comes after Genesis Global Capital, that's a corporate sibling to a Bitcoin trust uh, manager, Grayscale Investments. This is all, like, incestuous stuff, people. It's all the same people, just with, like, different names and different companies out there. That's silly. 
Uh, it halted their customers' withdrawal from the lending unit this week, so if you had money with them, it eh, might, might be in the Bahamas by now. Might be in the Bahamas, right? Now. Look at their X XRP is up. It's up, baby. It's still at three cents, but it's up. Or excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me, people. Pardon me. 38 cents. Bear has misread that this entire time. 38 cents, not your three cents out there. This is why you don't listen to beer for um, financial advice. Yes, indeed. Uh, shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, the world's largest publicly traded crypto fund, are trading at a new record discount of 43% to the price of the underlying Bitcoin. Crypto analysts, oh, what a great... You know, little Jimmy, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a crypto analyst. Oh, all right, son. You're going into the right field there. Forget all the firemen and all the other stuff. Better be a crypto analyst. Uh, they are speculating as to the reason. Uh, but the added pressure comes after Genesis Global Capital, an arm of digital currency group, one of the Grayscale Investments, which manages GBTC, announced this week that it would halt customer withdrawals from its lending unit stemming from the fallout of the collapse of the FTX crypto empire. By the way, Coindesk is an independent subsidiary of digital currency group known as DCG. See, it's all, it's all like, I mean, they just changed the name. They just like rearranged the letters around somewhere. And, oh, well, it's a completely different thing. No, it's just the same thing. It's just, they, they keep hiding this stuff. Uh, by the way, uh, so what, what this is talking about, so uh, uh, your price of Bitcoin, what is it, 16, let's just call it 1700 bucks. Uh, so basically, you can trade, you can trade with this, people. Uh, you can you can buy Bitcoin at half the price. Because that's, I mean, you know, of course, of course. And you can kind of see it keeps getting wider and wider and wider there. Uh, they're supposed to have Bitcoin in their quote-unquote bank that you're, um, you're kind of trading against there, but, uh, one might say it might not be there. Allegedly. Allegedly. A Grayscale Investments reassured investors on Wednesday that Genesis was not a candy party or service provider for any Grayscale products, even though it's under the same roof. Uh, and that Grayscale products would, quote, continue to operate business as usual by taking your money. Uh, the GBTC shares have not traded it at a premium to the underlying Bitcoin since March of last year, according to trade, trading, data, dra trading data, ah, for crying out loud, from CoinGlass. Take a drink. And the discount has widened this year, along with distress in the crypto markets and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, a refusal to allow a conversion of the fund into an exchange-traded fund. Basically, um, crypto, crypto, um, mainly the crypto stuff. I, I guess a little bit of Bitcoin there as well. Uh, they're basically on, on kind of one side of the kind of financial ledger, and then uh, your, your stocks, your bonds, your... Um, Normal investment, normal uh, bank or um, uh, investment-related stuff. And that's on the other side of the ledger. And nary shall the two meet. But uh, they're trying to they're trying to make that happen so they can kind of mix and commingle that stuff. So uh, uh, the books the books just aren't. Uh, you can only cook them so much, and then uh, you say, "Hey, wait a minute, something's going on in here." So uh, you you want to mix it with uh, you know another legitimate asset out there. So uh, that's basically what they're trying to do. A GBTC is an investment vehicle that allows U.S. investors to gain exposure, quote-unquote, uh, to price movements of Bitcoin without buying the asset itself. You got that, people? You got it. The crypto fund? Uh, three Arrows Capital. Oh, gosh, weren't they the ones that crashed FTX? I forget if it was them or something else. Uh, was a large holder of GBTC and told Bloomberg in July that the arbitrage trading the premium was one of the factors that led to its collapse earlier this year. Oh, okay, that was another one that collapsed. God, they all, they all run together. Okay, so three arrows collapsed, uh, I want to say September, October, something like that. Uh, so they went down, let's see, FTX went down. Of course, they had a whole bunch of their money of, um, of, uh, uh, Genesis Global here. Uh, it's all it's all just intermingled here. It's all just crazy. Uh, for some investors, uh, the recent widening of the discount may have made the vehicle even more attractive 
Yeah, for suckers out there. A Bloomberg reported that Catherine Woods Arc Investment Management bought more than 315,000 shares worth roughly 2.8 million of GBTC GBTC shares earlier this week. By the way, if you ever see this lady in her investment management uh, uh, firm out there, whatever she's buying, uh, uh, sell. Uh, just go ahead and sell it, or don't buy it. Or buy buy their competitor. Uh, this lady is terrible. Uh, don't invest. Uh, don't take advice from beer on investment, but um, uh, don't invest with this lady. Uh, she's she's lost a lot of money. <laughs> she's lost a lot of money. Uh, let's see. Uh, this week's move by Genesis has sparked a speculation online that Grayscale might alter its current strategy, which consists of keeping the fund going while uh, simultaneously suing the U.S. Uh, Security Exchange Commission over the agency's rejection of their ETF conversion. Again, they're trying to trying to mix their funds there. So, um, uh, their their entire business model apparently relies on this um, uh, ETF conversion. If they don't get it, uh, good old folks here, uh, this might continue to to kind of go down, 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 down. Down they go. Dive, dive, dive. Well, well, that would be. That would be these guys. Do not, do not take investment advice from a beer. From a beer. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, oh well. Uh, if the FTX is. Oh, okay. I read that. Um, let's see. I feel like we need to get the. Oh, okay. I read that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait. You're buying access to potentially non-existent virtual currency uh, from them at a discount. So you're buying even less real non-assets than normal crypto. Uh, y yeah. Yeah, so, um, it doesn't pass the smell test. Uh, you know, if it's, Bear's kind of thing is, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Now, will people be able to make money off of it? Sure. But, uh, again, another one of these crazy Ponzi schemes, and, um, uh, really, once you get into it, uh, you're just trying to sell it to the next sucker out there, the next, um, uh, next person out there that's kind of where bear kind of comes down with that stuff you know you, you hear oh well the wait, 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 hold on let me find it let me find it here where was he Do -do 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 -do. so they're talking about uh was it this one let me see yeah the the, the bank out here so they're talking about how much he was worth oh he's worth billions and billions of dollars well until he wasn't until he wasn't out there and that that was kind of the the whole collapse there but um really it kind of, i mean uh, uh, flip it around. Let's just say it's on the other side of the ledger there. It's uh, stocks and bonds. So let's just say, I don't know, um, uh, 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 Jeff Bezos out there. All right, Jeff Bezos has a whole bunch of stock in Amazon. Uh, so Jeff Bezos is worth, you know, X amount, X billions of dollars he's worth or whatever. Uh, well, he's worth that in the stock of Amazon. So uh, if Jeff Bezos went to go sell all of his, let's just say he wanted to... Um, be like Scrooge McDuck out here and buy a swimming pool filled with gold coins out there. Let's just say he wanted to trade all his stocks and says, you know what, I want to dive into that pool. Uh, forget about the head injuries and all that sort of stuff. I want to dive into that pool of um, uh, gold, you know, gold bars, gold coins, gold jewelry out there and, and, and live out his remaining days just like that, just swimming the backstroke and everything. Well, he's got to be able to find somebody who will buy it that's kind of the big thing. And then once he does, you know, people say, well, wait a minute, hold on, Jeff Bezos is selling all of his Amazon stock. Something might, something might be going wrong. Well, the value of the price or the, the value of the stock goes down. So you've got to just kind of sell it in kind of segments or sequences there. Uh, same thing happened here. You know, uh, uh, the bankman out there, oh, he's worth all this amount of money. Well, he would be worth all that amount of money if he sold it. But then when people called him on it and says, hey, we don't think you have the money in the bank that you say you do. Well, the whole thing fell apart there. So kind of kind of the same thing there. Um, he, he really, that's why Bear kind of cautions that stuff. Oh, this, this uh, crypto billionaire out here. Well, uh, he's got to sell all of his, you know, Dogecoin or Shiba Inu or whatever the heck that they have up there. They got to sell all that. And they got to have an actual buyer out there that wants to buy all that sort of stuff. So that would be kind of the, kind of the, um, uh, uh, Wrinkle, wrinkle in the whole plan there. Yes, indeed. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. I see shenanigans in here. Hold on. 
So yeah, you mean crypto may not be 100% on the up and up. P-Money, I'm sorry to break this to you, sir, but um, that is true. That is true. Uh, next, you'll tell me that uh, hedge funds are also up to shenanigans. Well, there's a whole other, whole other thing there, I tell you. And then uh, not all politicians are honest. What? What? No way. Uh, and then next, Bear will say Robert Pattinson is not the greatest Batman ever. He, listen, sir, the Batman is the worst Batman movie out there. The worst. I'm talking about even worse than the George Clooney one. George Clo- uh, uh, Robert Pattinson, better actor. Better actor out there. But the George Clooney Batman was better than the Batman out there. I will... I will debate anybody out there. That is the gosh darn honest truth out here. Urgh. Hate that movie. Why are we even talking about the Batman? Urgh. Shibu Wino coin. I, I, Shibu Wino, whatever the hell it is. Gotta invest in that. Well, uh, let let Bear uh, mint a couple coins here real quick, and um, you will be you will be one of the early investors, P money. You will be one. Of, I it always meant to do salmon coin. Always meant to do salmon. It was funny. I remember one of the streams. Um, I, I think Mike Miller was looking up different different coins and prices and stuff like that to invest in. Bear was like, "Yeah, go invest in salmon coin." He goes and looks it up. It's like, no, there's not really salmon coin, Mike. Come on, come on, man. Come on. All right. Uh, by the way, I should have I should have done this uh, previously. Let me see if I can. How do I do this here? Hold on. Let's see. Engage. I want to engage with my audience. Want to engage with my audience. Let's see. Start a Q and A. Uh, a poll. Uh, that, that's what I need. I need. Bear needs a poll here. All right. So we were talking uh, the other week about uh, your boy Zach. He's got a new book. Uh, coming out, it is the Rambo book out there. Uh, what was it called? First, first kill, first kill, I believe. Uh, Bear kind of made mention. He says, "Hey, you know what? It would be kind of really neat to do, kind of a, kind of a watch along with um, uh, the Rambo movies out there. I think that would be kind of interesting." Let me get rid of this. Hold on, hold on a second. Where am I? Oh, Rambo. So one of the things Bear was thinking about was maybe, maybe doing a, a Rambo watch along here. Uh, maybe starting uh, this next week here. So let me do, let me do this. Rambo, what, what, it, not watch along, what is it called? Uh, Rambo, um, yeah, we'll, we'll call it what, we'll call it watch along. Okay, so if you'd want to join Bear, Join Bear for a watch-along for all. We're going to do all of them, people. We're going to do all of them. Well, uh, we'll we'll start with the first one. We'll start the first one, and if it goes... Well, we will ask the question first. If everybody says no, Bear's not going to bother with it here. But um, we'll start with the first one. I need to figure out how to do this, though. Um, Is Rambo on any of these streaming services? I thought it was on... Uh, Google here, or YouTube here, but I'll have to double check that. Um, I, I caught it on um, uh, the Apple TV thing. Uh, it's only like 20 bucks if you buy all five of them. So uh, it's really not that, that big of a price. Uh, probably what you would have to do is find it either on a streaming or um, uh, one of those. What we're going to try and do is uh, set up a time. We'll set up a time. We'll be, okay, three, two, one, start. We'll start the movie, and that way you can watch along. Also, Bear can kind of comment and watch along as well there. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to have to do it kind of like this, where it's got the different um, different kind of images there. i got to kind of download all that sort of stuff and kind of organize all that. So that might be might be biting off more than Bear can chew out here. But I uh, wanted to get the, the feel of the room out there. Might try and start it. Here's what Bear's thinking. I'm thinking about... Um, Ooh, Rambo might be a little intense for Amy. Oh, well, I apologize. Um, oh, yeah, it would be rated R, wouldn't it? Um, hmm. Um, 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 uh, yeah. Well, well anyways, uh, I'll go ahead, uh, put it down in the, um, in the poll question there. Let's see, can we do poll questions after the thing is closed? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if if Bear can't, if Bear can't do it, uh, and if you were watching this after the fact, uh, just leave a comment down below there. Uh, Bear will, we will check that out and add it to the total 
out there. So, um, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we'll have to do this uh, either watching it, you know, kind of with a streaming service, or Barrett's just going to put up, you know, the photos and try and keep it kind of within... I don't think that you can do it. I, I, we'll have to see. I, I might try a early an early test run of this. But the idea, the idea here is do um, uh, Wednesday, we'll do the first movie there. Uh, Thursday, Turkey Day, uh, we'll do the second movie. What is that? Uh, part two. Uh, the third one will be Friday. So that's the one that he goes to Afghanistan. Uh, fourth will be um, Saturday. Saturday? Saturday uh, would be, what's the name of it? I think it's just called Rambo. Um, and then the fifth one, the latest one, the one that came out just, uh, was it, Last year, the year before last, or something like that. So, um, uh, try and do it each one of those days. Now, if nobody is interested, we won't do it. Uh, if we screw up royally on the first one there, um, I may not do the second or third or fourth ones there. But hopefully, hopefully be able to do kind of a holiday, Thanksgiving holiday watch along with, um, uh, Rambo out there just blasting the commies like, like Indiana Jones should be doing instead of the... Freaking bad Germans. 20, 25 years after the fact. What the hell, man? Urgh. Space snakes. Urgh. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of the fun. Maybe I might try and do uh, just kind of a test stream. Maybe maybe Tuesday or something like that. Just to see if it would work. I might try. I might try. If it does show up on YouTube here, I might see if we can do it that way. Because it's like, it's already on YouTube and Bear's not, not making any money off of this. I'm not monetized or anything like that. So... Maybe we could try it out. I'm not sure, but um, we'll we'll try it out. We'll we'll see how that works. But anyways, let's see. Let's see what the let's see what the vote vote totals are here. Let me see. How is this? Yes, yes, is at one hundred percent. Ah, okay. All right. So there we go. Uh, a a confirmed yes uh, so far. So we'll uh, everybody other than Amy out there might um, might check it out there. But uh, there we go. Unless there's a Rambo Saturday morning cartoon there. I think there is. I think there was a animated Rambo out there. But uh, no, we're just doing uh, in coordination uh, with... Um, uh, I'm not coordinating with your boy, Zach. But uh, uh, along with his campaign there. Just trying to promote the Rambo campaign out there. Why not do a watch party? Why not do something like that? Bear tried it with the... Um, <laughs> I don't know how many people watch the Foundation show. But um, I tried doing that... Uh, uh, let's see, who was that? Um, uh, Jimmy Cricket was like, oh yeah, Bear, come on, let's do, let's do a Foundation watch-along thing. All right, Bear was there, he's ready to do it. I think we did it last year. I think we did it last year at Thanksgiving time. Uh, nobody showed up. Like, oh man, Bear's just here talking about, you know, female Chris Rock and, you know, uh, the, the Water Girl and uh, Space Jesus and all this sort of stuff. That's just talking to himself. So, um, uh, if he doesn't have any, uh, any, um, uh, enthusiasm behind it, we'll say, eh, maybe not, maybe not, but, um, uh, we'll see. Let's see, it sounds like a fun thing to do, though, a popcorn in a movie with Bear, that's true, that's true, we will be watching along, so, uh, hopefully, hopefully some of you maybe have the first or second movie out there, so, um, uh, you know, you can already watch it, I will have to look, I don't know, uh, Bear's got Apple TV, and I think we've got Amazon, so uh, I'll check on both of those. I doubt it's on Apple. Um, i have to check Amazon. Uh, if anybody's got any other suggestions out there, just leave it for Bear there. Hopefully, hopefully it will be there, or a, a low price, you know, a dollar. I think that would, be, that would be worth it out there for all that sort of stuff. What about a turkey day with Mystery Science Theater 3000? Well, that, that breaks up what Bear's trying to do here. Um, I, I, I don't mind. I, gosh, I would have to go find... Bear, Bear watched it many, many years ago when it was on TV, so uh, I'd have to... Probably the, the older ones. The I know they made a comeback... What was it? Was it Netflix? Maybe Netflix that was doing that, so... Um, I, I, I don't know the provenance on, on some of the newer ones there. Haven't seen any of them. The older ones, classic. Classic stuff out there. Classic stuff. Let's see, I saw a watch party thing on Discord, says Grant, uh, thinking, I've been thinking about trying, been randomly streaming Minecraft for no reason. Okay. Um, Bear does have a Discord, but he has nobody. <laughs> Bear has a Discord, but has nobody on there, so, um, hmm, I, I'm not sure. 
Beer, Beer just has Discord. He really does. I, I'll, I'll jump in every once in a while with Gary Shipman and say hello to everybody there. But uh, Beer is not very, not very familiar with the Discord there. So uh, that would be kind of a, a steep learning curve for Beer. But I would, I would try it. I think they stream Turkey Day on YouTube every year. Oh, okay, okay. I see. All right. Well, I'll have to I'll have to check that out. They also have a, a Mystery Science Theater 3000 Twitch channel. Well, apparently, apparently we are being guided away from Rambo and towards a Mystery Science Theater. Mystery Science Theater. Uh, LOL, the same. Nobody on my Discord channel. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, people, go check out G Grant's uh, uh, Discord channel out there. Go ahead and leave the uh, uh, leave the um, uh, username out there if you want. But I don't want to interrupt your Rambo Turkey Day. That's right. It's Rambo's Day. It's Bear's Day. Ugh. Um, so what? we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, two whole votes. Two whole votes. So, um, yeah, that's not looking not looking very good. We'll, we might try something Wednesday. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do the normal show on Wednesday, and um, we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, and kind of go from there. And if there's interest, if there's interest, we might do it. If not, you know, I, I, P Money's right. P Money's right. I don't want people to go out and buy, you know, buy Rambo if they don't like the movie or don't want to watch it or whatever. Um, but if you've got it on DVD or something like that, and just kind of want a little bit of a watch along or something like that, I think that might be. I think it might be fun. I think it might be fun out there. Let's see, uh, there's an invite on Gary's Discord. Oh, on the invite channel. Oh, gosh, I need to do that. I, although, I let's see, there's there's like a setting in there that Bear's got to, um, he's got to change. One of the things Bear thought about is if you ever did like a Patreon or something like that, that would be, like, you would be a Patreon member that would have access to the Discord. Although, Bear isn't that tech savvy. If you, if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, Bear isn't that tech savvy out here. So, uh, that really never, never went anywhere. Never went anywhere. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. You can do your rainbow show. Well, thank you, Amy. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it was just something that Beer was thinking about. They had the, um, uh, the comic that was coming out there. Let me see if I've got that. Let me see. One second here, people. <clears throat> Let's see. Enough of that. Oops, that was you, people. Let's see. Do I still have it? Yeah, there's the there's the Rambo comic out there from uh, your boy Zach. Your boy Zach out there. So, anyways, I was trying to do something a little bit along those lines there. Oh, pardon me. Getting the burps here. Getting the burps at the end of the show. Let me take a drink. Ah. So that that was kind of the thought uh, behind it. Kind of a. Uh, promotion, promotion out there for people to check. Uh, you don't need bears, don't need bear show to promote uh, the Rambo comic out there. But hey, since they came out with it, why not go ahead and do something like that? Otherwise, it was like, okay, what other, you know, could we do another watch along or something else out there? I didn't really realize about uh, mystery science, but um, you know, trying to think of something else out there. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, Rambo, maybe the entire series, maybe just the one. You never know. Uh, we'll we'll uh, play it by ear. If you happen to see Bear on maybe like a Tuesday evening or something like that, um, uh, trying something out, uh, come on by. Uh, Bear might uh, just be checking out the um, the copyright, and if Bear gets a copyright claim there, then uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and leave that be, and uh, maybe try something different. But uh, anyways, something to think about. If you want to do that, uh, go ahead. Uh, vote, vote here, or also. Uh, Leave a comment down there for Bear, and Bear will check it out. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, you get the internet in a cave in the woods. Bear is very tech savvy. Well, thank you, thank you, Amy. Do appreciate that. All right, all right. Well, with a with a measly two votes out here, with two votes, the yays have it, and the nays didn't vote out there. So if you didn't want it, uh, I'll give you ten seconds out here. Give you 10 seconds to hit your no button. No button out there. Although we might do like Arizona and take a week and a half to um, uh, just make sure we tabulate everything and make sure we check all of our car trunks 
to make sure there might not be any more votes out there. You never know. There could be votes, oh, you know, on you know, in the back of cars, on, you know, uh, thumb drives, uh, all over. All the, bar the votes just, you know, float out there in the ether. And you just got to be able to catch them. Arr, give me those votes. It, it takes a couple. It takes a couple weeks sometimes. Yes, indeed. Marco for Anthony, what took you so long, sir? What took you so long to get here? I, w I want your vote. We need your vote, sir. Bear lives in a hobbit hole, he says. That means comfort. Well, it is comfortable. It is very comfortable. All right, we are closing, closing down the vote here with three votes. We have three, three whole votes that says yes, 100%. Uh, much like Saddam Hussein, he gets 100% of the vote uh, without, without any, any challengers out there. Yes, indeed. All right, we are ending in three, two, one. Three, two, one, in poll. All right, so there, there is that. With 100% voting out there, it's a yes. All right, well, uh, like you said, I might try and do this uh, Tuesday just kind of as I set up, uh, see if everything works. So if you see Bear On Live, come on by, check it out, say hello. Uh, check out your streaming services, whichever ones they happen to be. See if they do the room. They might only do maybe... Like certain ones, you know, they might do one and three, but not two and four or something like that. So um, uh, if you come across that, let Bear know, maybe down in the comments there or something like that. Uh, we'll try and figure it out. Uh, we'll definitely do the first movie. We'll definitely do the first movie uh, on Wednesday during our normal show. Probably what we'll do is we'll do the normal start time at 8 o'clock, wait a little bit, maybe 20, 30 minutes or something like that. Get everybody to come in, make sure that they... You know, we're all lined up and everything, and figure out if we can do this. And then we'll just go ahead, we'll all try and start at the same time, and, um, and do a watch long. Bear hasn't seen, uh, the first movie in a long time. Uh, you know, uh, the second movie, you know, always see on cable or something like that. Of course, the third one, uh, they stopped showing that for a little while, I wonder why. Uh, have not, s no, wait, I've seen part of the fourth one. Have not seen the fifth one. Uh, so if we even get that far... Uh, that would be new, new for beer out here. Yes, indeed. I don't want to vote against anyone else's fun time. Well, you got to put... Uh, bear, how's Bear going to know? How's Bear going to know? I, I need... We, we need that token, uh, token uh, representation out there. So it, it doesn't look like a Saddam Hussein uh, vote party out there. It's all 100%. So uh, it's fine, Amy. You don't have to... You don't have to watch. You can come on by and uh, just join in with the chat. Enjoy some popcorn. All that good stuff. I didn't vote because I won't be able to make a commitment. Well, well, thank you, Grant. I appreciate that. I, I'm not sure if I trust Bear with the ring, though. Well, well, well. Uh, Bear would probably betray the fellowship. Well, that's true. That's that's true. That's true. Uh, you can't. I, I, I can't. Uh, can't say no to that. It becomes the Dark Bear Lord. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You, you missed. Uh, Marco for Anthony, you missed our great movie out idea out there with uh, Indiana Jones coming back uh, from the moon uh, when he doesn't know that he's smuggled aboard the lunar lander uh, space snakes, uh, snakes on the moon. Yes, indeed. See, they got to get these stinking snakes off this stinking rocket here. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, uh, Melissa says what Bear is just about to get to. A good night, and everyone, and God bless out there. Yes, indeed. All of this talk. All this talk has made Bear hungry. Would you believe it? Yes, indeed. So we'll try this. We'll try this uh, Wednesday. If you happen to see us around on Tuesday, stop by, say hello. We'll just do a test stream or something like that. But you know what? Until next time, people. Grrr.